Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balcom. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a Primaris Eradicator. So first off, we're going to be using some Citadel Dryad Bark. I'm going to be using this as the flesh tone for this miniature. So depending on which colour that you're painting your miniature, depends on what colour you use here. Like so. Next up, we're going to work on his armour. So, we're going to use Citadel Mephist on red to give it the nice base red colour. I'm using a very old brush to do this. It's actually a Citadel medium layer brush that's old and haggard, doesn't have a point anymore, and it's probably about two thirds of the length it should be because the bristles have all fallen apart. But it's ideal for doing quick base coats, getting on large areas of colour without worrying about damaging the brush because probably should be binned but you can use it for stuff like this maybe doing a little bit of dry brushing with it so still a bit of use in it even though it's old and battered so with the Mephist on red finish we're now going to move on to Vallejo black obviously any black colour that you want to use is fine for this going to be doing the armour trim his mask the, the body of the melter rifle also the seal parts between each of the sections of the armour. Just give them a nice smooth coat of the black. And once you've finished with that, you can move on to the next colour. Now we're going to be working with Vallejo Model Air Chrome. I'm going to be using this to do the other parts of the melter rifle and some parts on his respirator too. Now the respirator itself has got plenty of tubes down the side so you can do these variety of colours. For ease I'm just going to be doing them using the Model Air Chrome and then a wash. But if you want to do them as different coloured tubes or raw tubes or anything like that you can crack on with that. But the Chrome gives it a nice base colour is a lovely colour to have all the weaponry. Next up it's Citadel Rekarth Flesh. I'm just going to use this to do the parchment on the purity seal which is hanging off his leg here. Give this a nice smooth layer and it's on to the next one. Like so. Next up we're going to be using a little bit of corn red and this is just to do the actual purity seal itself, the little wax part at the top. So very, very quick layer. Doing that a different red so it will stand out against his leg. Now I'm going to be using Citadel Retributor Armour. We're going to be using this to paint all of the gold on a model. Now there isn't an outrageous amount of this really. You've got the Aquila on each side of the Melter Rifle. You've also got the little kind of crusade badge, I suppose it is, on the left arm there on his forearm. It's not really too much to add to that. The final base colour we're going to use is Citadel Mornfang Brown. You're going to use this on all of the pouches and his holster. Once you've got a nice smooth layer of this, we can start applying all the shades. First shade we're going to use is Citadel Nuln Oil, and we're just going to be using this to do the skin on his head. You want to give that a good wash but make sure that it doesn't pull too much as the details on the face are usually quite slight and you don't want to fill them up with even the amount of pigmenty stuff that the shade would leave in there. We're now going to move on to Citadel Agraxair shade and we're going to be using this to paint all of the gold. Not 
darken that gold right up, which is what we're after. Next up, we're going back to Nuln Oil because I forgot to do the pouches on the back. So you give them a good coat of Nuln Oil. Just trying to keep them like the Indomitus ones, who seem to have very dark pouches, or dark shades on the pouches, so we're using a bit of Nuln Oil to replicate that. Like so. Next up, Seraphim Sepia. From Citadel, we're going to use this just to do the parchment on the purity seal. And with that out of the way, we're now going to use some Citadel Carobird Crimson to do the wax part of the purity seal. Now it's Nuln Oil Gloss, I'm going to use this just to do the Melter Rifle, all that silver bodywork that we've got there, just go over that, the tubes coming out the back of his legs, and also the vents and stuff on the power pack and the bits on his respirator too. It's not really necessary to do this in Nuln Oil Gloss, but it does tend to make it a little bit more shiny. So keeping with the Imperials having the nice shiny weaponry and stuff like that and everyone else being a bit shoddy looking, that's what I'm going with here. So the final shade we're going to use is Citadel Drucci Violet. I'm going to use this to do the red. Now you can just do this in all the recesses if you want to. I tend to do it a lot more spread out because the areas where it's going to be shaded under his legs and things like that, I wouldn't paint with the base colour again, it'll just leave that shaded. So if you are painting it, you can be quite slapdash with it because you just want to have a nice smooth layer of it, darker in the recesses, and a smooth darkness underneath the legs and the arms and that kind of thing, so it does mimic shade. So with that done, we're now going to return to Citadel and Mephist on red. I'm going to start reapplying these colours to him. I'm going to be leaving the shade in the recesses and you also want to be leaving the shades underneath the arms and underneath the legs, underneath the power pack too, so that the underside of it doesn't have these base colours going on, just because we do want to have the shade acting like proper shade. Next up, we're going to use some Evil Sun Scarlet. This is a lovely red colour, which adds a little bit of an orange tint to the armour itself. And when we're applying this, you want to be applying it to about 50% of the area that you've just done the fist on red on. So, you're looking to paint this on the areas where light would be catching it, if you're shining the light from above. So on those pauldrons, you're going to have the whole top part of it is going to be Evil Sun Scarlet. And the further down it goes, the less evil sun scarlet you're going to have until the bottom's just on the fist on red. If it's underside the arms or legs, no chance of that. You're going to have this colour going about halfway down the arms. And to highlight this, we're going to use some Citadel Squig Orange, which you want to be mainly doing on the top edges. Now, I do do a few little bits on the bottom edges. And that is the areas that will be catching the light, because maybe the top of that part is hidden by some sort of ridge over the top of it, so down by his heels and that kind of thing. When you look at the painting, the, the ridges going down his heels will be highlighted even though they're on the underside edge, and that's just because the top edge of that part is hidden by the piece above. Next up, we're going to be using some Citadel Burnt Umber. Now this is pretty much identical to the Dryad Bark, so if you're using Dryad Bark, just use the Dryad Bark. I've inadvertently picked up the wrong paint when I've been repainting. But as you can tell from the look of it, it is pretty much identical to Dryad Bark. So whatever skin colour you're doing, just return to that skin colour and use that one. Now we're going to lighten this colour by adding a little bit of Citadel Mournfang Brown. 
I'm going to start lightening the skin, applying highlights to it. The same as with the armor, you're looking to try and highlight the areas that are going to catch the light that little bit more, so the sides of the head slightly less so compared to the top of the head. Then you've got those ridges down the forehead, the kind of bridge of the nose and the sections around the eye as well. I'm going to add a little bit more Morn Fang Brown to that and do a little bit more of a highlight. Like so. I'm just going to add a final bit of more fang brown to the previous mix. I'm just going to ever so lightly do a couple of little highlights on his features there and a tiny little bit on the top of his head just to lighten that up. I'm going to call his skin done. Now for one tiny detail on the head there, we're going to add a little bit of pink horror to the previous mix, lighten that up. We're just going to do, there's a tiny little scar here on the front of his head. So we're just going to do those two with that colour. Now we're going to use some Vallejo white. We're just going to paint his eyeball. So again, always dragging away from the tip of the brush and do the eye from side to side. And now we're going to use some Vallejo Black. I'm just going to put a tiny little pupil in the eye. Like so. Now we're going to start working on the eye lens. So we're going to use Citadel Avalon Sunset just to give that its initial base coat. Like so. I'm going to give that a little wash with Citadel Fugan Orange. like so. While we wait for that to dry, we're going to move on to doing the gold. So we're going to start with Citadel Retributor Armour. Just going to leave the Agraxair shade in all the recesses. And reapply that colour just to get that nice gold back. Like so. Next up, it's Citadel Liberator Gold, and we're going to highlight the Retributor Armour. Now you want to be thinking about where the light's coming from again, so you're going to be highlighting the areas that are on the top, and not highlighting the areas that are on the bottom, unless it's a top edge. Like so. Next up, we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo Modeler Chrome, or Vallejo Modeler Silver, anything along those lines, to the Liberator Gold. We're just going to do little highlights on these gold areas, the top edges, and bits that will be catching a light or causing reflection of light. Now we're returning to the eye and we're going to add Citadel Avalon Sunset to the lens again. Like so. Now we're going to add a little bit of white to the Avalon Sunset. We're just going to do a crescent on the bottom left hand side of the lens. So maybe about 50% of the lens you want to be covering with this crescent. Now we're going to add some more white to that. And we're going to add a smaller crescent that takes up about 50% of the highlight that we've just done.
like so. And then finally on the lens, we're going to use pure white. We're just going to do a tiny thin line on the bottom left hand edge of that lens and a white spot on the top right edge. This gives us the impression of light reflecting off the lens. Like so. Next up, we're going to use some Citadel Null Oil. We're just going to paint these cables and stuff on the respirator. The reason I'm doing this is because the gloss didn't really shade them too much. I wanted them a little bit darker on the respirator. So I thought add some of the normal Null Oil shade and that'll darken them down a little bit. We're going to work on the pouches. We're going to start with Citadel Mournfang Brown. I'm going to reapply the base layer, making sure that you're leaving some of the Nuln oil in the recesses around the straps and the kind of top cover of the pouches. On the holster, you want to look for those little gentle recesses, the gentle kind of concave sections on the holster. Just leave some of the shade in that too, so that you can see the kind of groove in there like so now we're going to add some citadel rakarth flesh we're going to start adding this to areas that will be getting chafed and scratched so always think of these leather pouches so you want them to be a bit scuffed around the edges where they're going to be catching onto things so it doesn't matter about doing smooth lines around these you can do them as rough and ready as you want depending on how much scuffing you want main thing is to do is to do it in gentle brush strokes so that you are getting that kind of jagged highlight that makes it look a little bit more rough and ready now we're on citadel of our flesh once more adding that to the previous mix we're going to do one final highlight on these pouches and the holster Like so. Now we're going to start working on a purity seal with just plain Ricard flesh. It's going to be highlighting this to leave some of the seraphim sepia in the recesses. So that any overhangs or any indentations in the parchment itself is left shaded. Now I've added some white to the Ricard flesh and we're going to start doing the first highlight on it. Here you want to be aiming for the parts that are like the top of ridges or any flat surfaces, anything like that, much like you would do with the armour or anything like that. Now adding some more white to the mix. And doing another highlight. Just making sure to get all those areas. I'm going to use some Vallejo Black. I'm just going to use this to do some little thin horizontal lines. I'm using an Army Painter Wargamer character brush here. I'm just going to paint some lines on this as though they're text. Like so. So next up, we're going to start reapplying the black to the armour, making sure that any overspill from any other colours is covered up. And depending on how careful you've been or whether or not you've done this as you go along, that's fine. If you don't need to do this bit, you don't do it.
Next up, we're going to be using some Vallejo German Grey and start highlighting the black. Now, as with everything else, you want to be thinking about where the light is going to be catching it. So you want to be doing the top edges and the top surfaces of things, while as it gets more and more horizontal or goes towards the underside of an area, you don't want to be highlighting that, you want to be leaving that just the plain black. Finally, to highlight the black, we're going to use some Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. This is mainly to do edge highlights. So any edges which are on the upper kind of surfaces, you want to be highlighting those with the Mechanica Standard Grey, while leaving the ones that aren't. This just gives the impression of the light catching the top ones, not catching the ones below. Well, as he's a Blood Angel's successor, they have the same kind of chapter markings as the Blood Angels. So this guy is going to be the second company. So he's going to have the yellow teardrop on one shoulder. This is what we're adding here. Also, as the close support for the Blood Angels have yellow helms, I'm actually going to do the kneecap, the left kneecap yellow, rather than the helm, because I do like the Knights of the Chalice having the black helm, I think that looks really really cool. So I'm just going to use the knee pad to do the roll, the battlefield roll. And the right knee pad would be the squad number. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Uriel Yellow. This is going to be to just highlight that knee pad. Like so. And I'm just going to use a little bit of Citadel Cassandora Yellow on the underside of that knee just to darken that down and shade it a bit. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel McCrag Blue just to paint that right knee pad. The reason for this is going to be the sixth squad in the second company. So he's got the almost like the Scottish flag with the blue background and the white diagonal cross on it. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo White just to put that cross on. When you're doing this, they are slightly awkward, the knees, because the weapon hangs over one way, so you can't get a really good positioning on it. You've got the trim of the knee pad going over the other way, so that makes it a little bit awkward from going the other side as well. But I paint it on quite thick. Use a little bit of McCrag Blue to get those angles in on the sides. I'm just going to pick out those kind of triangles on the top, the bottom and the left and the right just to shape this cross the way we want it to go. Once you've finished doing the shaping with the McCrag blue you can then just re-add the white. So next up we're going to be using some Vallejo black I'm going to be painting the Knights of the Chalice symbol on this shoulder. I will link up the video of how to do this as I did that a few weeks ago. So 
So you want to be building up the shape of the chalice, not worrying too much about those little gaps initially, because you can always add those gaps in afterwards by using a little bit of red and a thin brush. So what you want to do is just work on that chalice shape. And once you're happy with the shape of it, just go back with a really thin brush and some red and do the lines between. So this is the colours that we're going to be using to do the tempering on the Melter Rifle Barrel. A Grax Earthshade, Seraphim Sepia, Cassandora Yellow, Fugan Orange, Cairo Bird Crimson, Drucci Violet, Drachenhof Nightshade and Nuln Oil. And that's the order that we're going to use them, so start off with Citadel A Grax Earthshade and you're just going to be doing a thin rim around at the very start of the barrel. Now that you've finished that, we're going to move on to Citadel Seraphim Sepia. And you're going to do a little thin line of Seraphim Sepia around the barrel, touching the Agrax Earthshade. Next up, it's going to be Citadel Cassandora Yellow. We're going to do the same again. Each time you're probably adding less than a mil width of paint around there, or of shade I should say. Now it's Citadel Fugan Orange, and again we're just going to be doing a very thin line of it around the edge next to the Carrowbird Crimson. You can see we're working our way along the barrel with the different colours. This will give you quite a nice tempering effect with no real effort. Next up is Citadel Carrowbird Crimson. Same again, you're just going to do a thin line of this, touching the Fugan Orange. Next is Citadel Drucci Violet. Once more, a very thin line of this going around the barrel. And it's the colour that's going between the Carrowbird Crimson. On the next one, which is Citadel Drachenhof Nightshade. I'm just going to do a thin line of Drachenhof Nightshade around the barrel once more. And then onto the final colour, which is Citadel Nuln Oil. Just want to paint that on there to darken up the end of that barrel. That is your tempered effect going on there, like so. And that is the finished Primaris Eradicator. That's a great miniature, plenty of cool details on it. It's got a lot of opportunity to do some really interesting things like the tempering on the barrel and the bionic eye, but really enjoyable to paint and happy with how it turned out. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media link below. Thanks very much.